Hi, welcome to Parker 244, a podcast with undergraduate student workers who are underpaid and overcaffeinated. I'm Emily, I'm Elizabeth, and I'm Victoria, and we're here to talk about all things Louisiana FFA. Hey guys, it's Elizabeth, and it's Adam, and we're here to talk about all things Louisiana FFA. So Adam, what's been happening? In the past few weeks, we've had two state CDE competitions. Bo Shan was crowned the winners in our state land judging competition. At the state fair, Tayo was crowned the state winners in our carpentry competition. Yeah, that's awesome. I know we're going to have a lot of winners rolling around, especially as LDE season comes up. Our parishes have started their first couple competitions, and Area will be starting their competitions in the first couple weeks of December, so that's really exciting. Yeah, LDEs are a great way to develop critical thinking skills, as well as to experience real-world situations, and it overall improve your communication skills. Speaking of communications, we have a new internship here in the state FFA office. Yeah, guys, this application is actually going to drop in January. We have two positions, one for an 11th grader and one for the 12th grader for the 2023-2024 school year. So if you're interested in Canva design, photo editing, and really anything and everything, all social media creation, we definitely encourage you to apply and to try to come work with oh Adam gosh. and I. Doesn't get better than that. No, it doesn't. Uh, so those applications will be out in January, and there's going to be more information on our website if you're interested. We also have the National FFA Scholarship that just came out, so make sure you get those applications in. And um... <laughs> Dang it, that was so good! No! Uh, <laughs> be like, yeah, can call see. her real quick? Yeah. Well, that's all I have. Yep, that's all I have. Well, we'll see you next week. <laughs> okay, let's do a different meaning. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's all I have, guys. Yep, that's all I got. All right, well, we'll see you next time. So now we're into our interview segment, and we're here with Lauren Poole today from Winfield to talk about her recent National Proficiency Award Championship. So Lauren, at National FA Convention this past year, you were a national championship in the area of environmental and natural resource management. Why don't you tell us a little bit about how that journey looked for you? Yes, yeah, so it started my freshman year when I was introduced to the forestry CDE and I was really hesitant to start in it at the beginning because my mom did a lot of forestry and I really wanted to get away from that but my ag teacher told me that you are going to do this and he really didn't give me a choice but I really enjoyed that CDE and it really opened the door to what forestry was for me, especially in my community, since forestry is one of the top commodities and the majority of the people in my community are employed some in some type in the forest industry. And then that summer, my mom worked at the United States Forest Service Wind Ranger District, and she heard about an opportunity for high school students called the Youth Conservation Corps program. And I actually had to apply to this program at the Forest Service and it was a summer job for three months. And so I got the job and my first year there, they don't expect you to know anything. So they actually teach you everything that you need to know to be successful in the job. And this first year, this first summer, I really did a lot with recreation. I did a lot of mowing and a lot of weed eating. And then towards the end of the summer, I was able to go out with our timber markers and really just learn more about the industry. So skip past to the next year where I applied to be a Youth Conservation Corps worker again. And this year I really was, I gained confidence in my skills and I was really able to expand and ask my employers for things that I wanted to experience. So I really broadened the scope of what I did in this next year. So I did everything from water testing. I also went out with our timber markers again, but I also got into the conservation side of it, uh, red cockaded woodpecker conservation specifically. And then I have a really big interest in engineering. It's what I want to go to college for. So I asked my employer if I could go out with our engineer. And he allowed us to go out with the engineer for a couple of days and really learned what they did in the Forest Service. 
And this really helped me because it gave me a broad view of what the forest industry was. It gave me the view from the beginning to the end where we first mark our timber sales and then we sell them to contractors and then we check up on those contractors and then after we replant that. And so that's really one of the best parts of the Youth Conservation Corps program. 80% of my time is spent working, but 20% of my time was also spent learning. And then that's where I was able to then apply for a proficiency award. That's awesome, Lauren. Um, you said you were a little hesitant to start this SAE. What other recommendations would you give to other members who have their own SAE? Yes, no matter where you are in your SAE, whether you are just starting or you're a few years in, one of the biggest pieces of advice that I could give is to not just, you know, patiently wait, but search for opportunities. One of the best opportunities was open to me when I asked for what I wanted, when I expressed, you know, what I wanted to do within this job. And my employers saw that and they were able to make accommodations for that. Now, I might not have been able to do that every day, but they really took what I wanted into account when they were searching for what I could do within this SAE. So even if you don't work in an employment SAE, a placement position, it's really important to search for those opportunities and search for ways, constantly search for ways that you can get better. A great story. Lauren, thank you so much again for coming on our podcast and sharing your story with us. You make all of us so proud and congratulations again. Thank you so much. I think I like the setup better. Okay. Do you like it? Yeah. Okay. Man, it is musty up there. Sorry, I can't be stiff. It's like musty in here. Like I am musted out. Well, we cannot have AC and you know that. Have you been downstairs? To the closet? Just like, have you been downstairs? Yeah. It's like, I felt like I walked into a frigid meat locker. It's like hot outside. I walk in, instantly cold, instantly musty, wet, mm -hmm. sticky, and outside's beautiful. I think it's about to rain though. All right, welcome back to Staffy Time, folks. Today we have a special themed Christmas video for y'all, themed Christmas Staffy Time. So today we're going to be ranking our favorite holiday cookies, okay? And before any of y'all come for me and mm -hmm. say that one of them is not a cookie, I just consider it a cookie, okay? So our options are we have sugar cookies, you know, those little holiday little cookies with like mm -hmm. sprinkles. And then we have cake balls, which I know are not, um, I like cake balls. But I feel like cake balls are like holiday, just, like people don't just make cake balls for like- We're gonna put them in this. Yeah, that's it. We, no one like we don't make cake balls for like, Easter. Yeah. No. So we're throwing cake balls in here. It's a winter. It's a winter dessert. Winter dessert. Mm -hmm. Okay. Peanut butter cookies with the Hershey kisses on top. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Gingerbread cookies because like you can't get closer to Christmas than like gingerbread cookies. And then chocolate chip because that's kind of a toss up. I feel like you can cook chocolate chip or you can bake chocolate chip, mm -hmm. but it's kind of a seed. It's, they can be seasonal. It's year round. Yes. I would say so. I would like to. That's okay. gonna be a hard one for me. Let's do number five. Okay. I want you to tell me what you think first. Number five as being like the worst? The worst. worst. The worst. I'm gonna say gingerbread. Really? Yeah. I would have to, I was gonna say like, cake balls. They're so moist. Oh, uh, you know what? Like, I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna keep it. Okay, so we'll put gingerbread just because we're gonna appease Victoria for today. Okay, four. Cake balls. Cake balls. I think cake balls are like soggy mm -hmm. and like they're just not. They're not it for me. I don't like how there's different flavored cake balls. I just don't. It's just mm -hmm. too much like a drama. It's too much like of a genre for me, and I just don't like the genre. I like Oreos, but Oreo balls better than Gross. cake balls. Sick. What's sick? Sick. What? Sick. You know what? I'm gonna make Oreo balls for you one day and you're gonna love it. 
I'm gonna be like, yeah, I ate them and I, I ate them all. And I'm gonna like, watch you eat them. I'm gonna like feed them to Verdell. Three. <laughs> okay, what's your third? Chuck chips. Really? Well, like they're just year round. I would go if, sugar cookie. If I'm going sugar cookie. Listen, if I'm going Christmas cookies, I'm gonna put chocolate chip as third. Cause sugar cookies are so good. But I feel like that's more of like a winter cookie. Sugar, you can eat sugar cookies. That, that's like the same thing. You can do sugar cookies all year round. I mean, like, yeah. I just think sugar cookies aren't as good as chocolate chip. Okay, we can put sugar cookies third. Sugar cookies third? Yeah. Okay, second, chocolate chip. I agree with that. Actually, for once, I agree with you. Cause that leaves at first, the peanut butter with the chocolate, the chocolate, like the Hershey Kiss. I think those are the best. Those are literally the best. Are the I best. love the like decadency. Mm -hmm of having like a fresh out, cause like you ever get them like fresh out the oven to where like the Hershey Kiss is like melting? Yeah. And it's like so like soft and decadent. I love it. I, I think we should do like a Staffy Time Bake Show where we like- I would so do that. Like we like bake in Miss Eton's kitchen. Listen, one thing about me, I can bake. I'm a baker. Are you? Yeah. When have you ever baked? I bake all the time. I've never seen I you just bake not anything. for you. I, I, I'm gonna bake you some Oreo balls though. Those aren't really baking, you just throw those in there. Yeah, you like you put cream just, cheese just in, in the fridge. <laughs> I'm oh gonna bake God. you some Oreo balls. I, I don't can want also that Oreo balls. Look, bake you some peanut butter. Look, <laughs> next Staffy Tom, we're gonna do a tutorial of how to bake cookies. I'll do that. Featuring us, maybe Adam. Maybe Adam. Adam. Yeah. I could not see Adam like <laughs> whipping it up right I think Adam could you think yeah not better than me though well that's all the time we have for staffy time today let us know in the comments below if you agree with our tier list <laughs>so in our chapter spotlight segment of the week we usually highlight a chapter that kind of did something amazing or really cool that we'd like to give them some recognition for and this week our chapter spotlight focuses on santa mall ffa santa mall won the chapter challenge we had for the sunshine raffle for the gator we gave chapters the opportunity to win a thousand dollars in a swag bag from sunshine in order to sell the most raffle tickets and santa mall ended up grossing the most raffle tickets so Good job, Santa Mall. Go Gators. Go Gators. Go Santa Mall FFA. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Parker 244. Be sure to like, subscribe, and then also follow all of our social medias. We have a really cool TikTok account, really funny stuff for our state officers to post, and we'll see y'all next time. See you later. Bye.